Welcome to the African International Mediation Week 2020 and Strategy 20 conference hosted in Kenya virtually from the November 30th to the 6th of December in the year 2020 with post conference events. Today is our session on Saturday 5th December 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. East African time. This is the official closing ceremony of the African International Mediation Week 2020 and Strategy 20 Kenya Conference. Our topic for today is landlord tenant mediation in housing and conflicts in commercial real estate. We have a case study of the conflict intervention service that is CIS by the Bar Association of San Francisco USA a mediation service that's keeping people housed in San Francisco and beyond. I welcome you to this session. Please feel at home as we prepare to begin. God bless you. We're, we're very personal. We're uh, delivered in person. Over 80% of our cases had in-person components, but advanced case evaluation and working with parties set them up for success. And we do that online. Uh, so we're just grateful to be here and to share um, things we're doing, which has become a much bigger program, helping anybody who may be facing loss of home, helping tenants and landlords, also commercial businesses. Um, and it's all focused on interest-based negotiation and thinking about relationship first. We lead with compassion and wrap that up with a lot of skills and experience. And, and we designed the program to share it with others. So we hope this is just the first opportunity to work with you uh, with, with our experience. Thank you again. We're so grateful to be here. Thank you, Roger. And uh, if any other guest would like our guests to introduce themselves, please do so before we get started. Hello. Hi. Yes, hi. Hi, hi. Uh, my name is Lono Pava and I'm from South Africa. I'm a young mediator, recently certified in South Africa. I have uh, basically, I've done a lot of civil work with civil organizations, local and international, Black Laws Association, United Nations Children's Fund, and all the above. I've just earned my LLB and I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us today. Any other of our colleagues who would like to say a couple words? Ishmael, let me offer the following uh, uh, on a voluntary basis. Uh, we do have some uh, material to share with you, but everything we do is very much a conversation. So we would encourage everyone, if you're not making dinner or something, uh, turn on your camera when you feel uh, comfortable so we can see you. Um, and this will be very much an interactive experience. Excellent. Thank you so much. And just a reminder that our meeting is being recorded. Um, with that said, uh, let me ask uh, Colin, are you going to go ahead and lead us with the opening today? Hello, Ishmael. Uh, yes, thank you. Yes, uh, thank Absolutely. you, Soya. Thank you so much. So, colleagues and friends, I welcome you to our closing cer official closing ceremony of the African International Mediation Week, um, one week where we have been able to have uh, a lot on not only mediation, but everything else that's been around it. And most of all, it's been a great week to connect with uh, peers from across Africa, with also peers who are uh, from other regions that are out of Africa. And uh, a day like today is, uh, one, is, is one of those days. So I welcome you to our official closing ceremony. And as I welcome you, we have um, a lot in store for you today, also that you will be able to take away with you. And uh, we look forward that it will be of value um, as you are able to advance on your mediation work. Today is the fifth day of December and that it's on a Saturday and our session is running from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. East African time. The theme of the African International Mediation Week is ADR Tomorrow for Africa. And specifically to re-equip for the re-emerging world of practice. And specifically we say intercepting Africa's dispute economy. 
Our topic of today is landlord tenant mediation in housing and conflicts in commercial and conflicts in commercial real estate. We have a case study of the conflict intervention service, commonly known as CIS, um, by the Bar Association of San Francisco, USA. This is a mediation service that's keeping people housed in San Francisco and beyond. And really, it gives us something to be able to share in together as mediators at, um, during this particular time as mediators develop their professional practice. So the way we will run our session is we will start off with the national anthem and also uh, be just before the national anthem, we have our performing artist who is uh, Colin and Colin is an R&B artist. And uh, so today he'll be giving us a performance as this is our closing ceremony. And uh, so as an artist, Colin Kennedy Mwai is from Kenya. Then he will also lead us uh, into the national anthem, the Kenyan national anthem in Kiswahili, meaning Wimbo wa Taifa. After that, uh, Reverend Father Professor Peter Gishure, he is getting onto the call. And uh, as soon as he gets onto the call, he will give, he's our chief guest today, then he will give us his remarks. But in the meantime, we will move to our team from the CIS, that is the Conflict Intervention Service, who, and they are running the show for today. After we have listened to the CIS team, we will be able to have perspectives from speakers who will be giving us their insights from the areas either of their work or areas they have experience in. And this will be connected to the intention that we can be able to develop our strategy as mediators after using what we learned from this session. As we go into the closing, we will have our panel and our panel will be giving us the one thing that they have learned and they are able to take away because our forum is an action forum. We move forward. So as I welcome you, please feel at home. Uh, we welcome our colleagues uh, from CIS, that's our facilitators, Roger Moss, uh, Ms. Ton Tonya Saheli, and also uh, Esmael Rahmian, and also all the other guests. Thank you, Jennifer, for uh, joining us uh, also. And thank you also, Alan Aldeho, for joining us. And we look forward to a wonderful session. So at this juncture, I invite uh, Colin Moy to kick status. Colin, Karibu, you can unmute. Habari ya leo. Colin. Yes, yeah, Salama. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be here and I'm glad Karim. to be performing in front of you. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So the only song I'm going to do that's going to entice you a little bit. Thank you so much for the chance. <laughs> Africa, yote ya kusifu. Africa, yote ya kusifu. Na Uganda, Tanzania. Na Burundi, kwa shangwe, Afrika yote ya kusifu, Afrika yote ya kusifu, na Sudan, wa Congo, na Nigeria, kwa shangwe, Afrika yote ya kusifu, Afrika yote ya kusifu, na Liberia, Zimbabwe, wa Morocco, wa Somali, Africa yote ya kusifu, na dunia yote ya kusifu, America, Kifaransa, na Australia, kwa shangwe. Thank you so much for that. Yes, uh, kindly, uh, Colin, you may lead us in the Kenyan national anthem at this juncture to officially start us off. Colin, the Kenyan national anthem, Wimbo wa Taifa in Kiswahili language. <laughs> Haki wenga o na mlinzi na tukae na uhuru amani na uhuru ta hatu kate na ustau amke ni ndugu zetu tu fa yezote bidi. 
Nasitutitoe kwa nguvu Nchi yetu ya Kenya tunayo ipenda Tuwe tayari kuhinda Na tutenge taifa letu Endi yo ajibu wetu Kenya is the healing Tunga ni mikono pamoja kazini Kila siku tuwe na shukrani Thank you. I thank you very much. Uh, Colin Kennedy Moy, who's our performing artist uh, for the day, for also leading us uh, uh, in the Kenyan national anthem, Yani Wimbo wa Taifa, our national anthem in Kiswahili. At this juncture, I kindly hand over to Ishmael to lead us through the next segment. Ishmael, Karibu, meaning welcome. Karibu. Ishmael, thank, Karibu sana. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And th thank you for our, welcome our guest who just joined us a few minutes ago. Um, today we'll be presenting CIS, Conflict Intervention Service of the Bar Association of San Francisco. And my colleague, Tanya Sahili is going to uh, take the lead on the discussion and we'll turn that over to her. So Tanya, please go ahead. Okay, so let me um, just share my screen, but I wanna get this in presentation mode before I do that. Oh, it's a little tricky, huh? If I do presentation, I can't see you. Is that right, Ishmael? If I do presentation, you can't see me, or can I see you, Ishmael? You may be able to see us on the side of your screen. It just depends on your setup. Okay, I think I can't. Um, I can't present like I would like to, but and see you. But I want to know if you could still hear me. So let me let me do that. Um, uh, Okay, so I know that we're pressed for time, so I'll just do it like I can. Can you all see this? Yes, and we can see, I can see you too and everyone else. Yeah, we can see. Okay, you. so it's not in presentation mode though. So we'll just go like this and that's fine um, because I do want you to be able to see the presentation. So thank you so much for having um, myself and my team here today to talk to you about the CIS program. Um, CIS stands for Conflict Intervention Service, and we have been um, up and running ever since 2016. Um, as you know, around the world, we are faced with unprecedented levels of homelessness. I'm pretty sure you can attest to this in your area as well. Um, and unfortunately, every day, these numbers are increasing I know here in our area, if you just go to a certain area of town and even maybe closer to your home than um, normal, uh, you'll see tents being set up because people are now homeless and they can no longer afford um, normal um, housing. So because of that, the CIS program was implemented and I'll have Roger talk about this a little bit more because this is his brainchild. Um, but the, the whole point of CIS is to help prevent evictions, which put some of our most vulnerable um, citizens at risk, such as children, seniors, um, those who are disabled, et cetera. And so um, our goal is to help prevent as much um, of those numbers those eviction numbers as possible. And I will just talk a little bit about our um, mission statement. So our goal is to disrupt the conflict that threatens homes, hearth and community. 
we endeavor to transform any conflict and resolve any dispute that may trigger homelessness. And homelessness is not um, something that happens in a vacuum. When a person is threatened with homelessness or eviction, that creates a whirlwind of things, um, kind of like a, a domino effect, if you will. And if we don't intervene early and often, we miss an opportunity to prevent or to prevent um, such things from happening. So what we do is um, we do, we try to intervene very early and often as you will see further on in this presentation. Um, one thing that makes CIS different from other programs is that we operate 24 hours. And you may be wondering how can we do that, but we have an excellent team and we share, um, we share the responsibility as a team. So as Roger mentioned, we deliver compassionate, practical collaborative negotiation processes and provide consumers with knowledge and skills to navigate housing conflict constructively and to better protect their interests in the future. So what I would like for Roger to do, if um, Roger, if you're willing, because I don't want to do a lot of talking, I would like this to be um, a conversation, but I would like for Roger to share about this brainchild of his and how it came to be, um, how it opened on January 1st and how we've been running um, very successfully ever since. Well, thank you, Tanya. And, um, you know, where to start and keep it brief is always the question. And, and so I'll try to give you just a very high altitude summary of how, the challenge that was presented, but the, the opportunity inside of that calamity to do much more. So in, even though homelessness has been a, a terrible problem in the city of San Francisco, my entire life, and I suspect before then, um, for whatever reason, in the year 2016, it became a significant hot button political issue. So the, the leadership of the city was forced to look at it in a really much more urgent way um, and they did many, many things. And one of the things that grew out of a huge expenditure of money that year was the creation. They wanted um, some sort of mediation to relieve burdens on the courts to uh, and, and the focus was the most vulnerable people who would only be homeless if they were evicted. Um, and they turned to the Bar Association of San Francisco, which has a long track record of developing specialty programs. And, Carol Kahn, uh, who, who may or may not be able to join us at some point in this call, is the key figure at the bar that develops these programs. She knew about my background in commercial real estate and also my study of what I call negotiating through the lens of, of recovery and behavioral health, which, which really is about how, how does mental illness, addiction, and those things, trauma, influence group dynamics and how and how does that influence how we show up and help people navigate conflict and try to get to the other side of it and and so carol empowered me to be very creative and and take some risks in putting this program together because we are a legal professional organization and that they tend to be conservative uh so the first thing i said was this sounds wonderful but it, it, it can't look anything like traditional mediation. In fact, we shouldn't even call it mediation. Let's call it something else. And that became conflict intervention service. And immediately everybody started referring to us as CIS. I said, it also can't be a tenant advocacy program in disguise. It's a horrendous job being a property manager in these difficult properties and all properties, really it's challenging. Landlords have to be given the same dignity and respect as tenants in order for this work. And then I said, you have to really understand how big real estate works. And by that, I mean large communities, in some cases, uh, hundreds of people living in one community. Uh, many of these communities are public housing. They've, they've been neglected over 50 or 60 years. They have all kinds of physical problems. The communities are traumatized. When you have that kind of environment, you cannot tell people 
Well, we can see you down here at our offices in a conference room 60 days from now to talk about your problem. Uh, I said, we need to show up fast. We need to go to the conflict. Many of the people who use our services are, have disabilities. You know, it's hard for them to get around. The property managers don't have time to leave and go have some sort of classic mediation experience somewhere. So we developed a number of components, which we have an ombuds function, and, and we, we studied workplace investigatory mediation and applied what we learned there to the program development. Um, but uh, above the, the two biggest components are we really understand the practical realities of real estate and we understand as a group and we're interdisciplinary how um, the behavioral health issues impact group dy dynamics and negotiation. So we established a simple idea and, and um, which is everybody is promised a, a response to their help request within 24 hours. Uh, most of the time, people hear back from us in minutes, within a couple hours, same day, no later than 24 hours later, and we don't take any holidays or weekends. Um, and, and we have a system that people leave a message, and before they hang up the phone, uh, or right after they hit send on their email, um, several of us are notified. And uh, for the first 18 months, I handled that myself and had a team of contractors doing the work in the field. And Tanya was one of our stars and is involved with a special education program that, that the bar runs. Um, so the, the urgency, we always bring a sense of urgency to everything. And we also, what do we mean when we say we show up with compassion? Here is a very specific example. I banned the word intake from our vocabulary. We do welcome calls, we do first contact calls, and, and we're very vocabulary conscious in how that creates a mindset that can have a, a, an unfortunate effect on, on the consumers, on the customers who need help. So they don't know what we call these calls, whether they're intake calls or not, but it's to remind me that there's someone who's frightened and in trouble calling, and I wanna show up with 100% listening and curiosity and love, and I want them to feel it from the first moment. Um, and, and then so we connect, and then we very quickly start asking them questions to learn a lot about their situation in a short period of time. We actually have our most experienced people are on the front end of these first contacts to evaluate the case, to figure out what kind of services are, are, are best put in place to deal with it. Um, we, just by the nature of real estate problems generally and how we operate our program, it's hybrid communication. Front end is online, telephone, uh, video conferencing. Uh, we were able to meet the crisis of COVID seamlessly because all of us were trained on Zoom and have been using it for years in our practices. Um, it's uh, asynchronous dialogue and, and, and shuttle negotiation. Uh, we, interestingly, the, the biggest bucket of our cases in which multiple people faced eviction was not a dispute between a tenant and a landlord. It was multiple residents of a community quarreling uh, acting out, fighting, sometimes engaging in dangerous behavior that disrupts a whole community. So multiple people face, face eviction. In those situations, um, you, it's essential at some point to have uh, in-person sessions before COVID, but to bring people together uh, to help them heal, to help sort out problems, and to at least get relationships functioning sufficiently well, even if it means they just agree to go the other way when they see each other coming. So they're not dis disrupting a community and putting a lot of people at risk. So by one-on-one -on -one conversations online, working with all the parties individually, and then I mentioned an interdisciplinary and I should also say multicultural team. I mean, we look like the city of San Francisco. We're a rainbow of, of backgrounds. Uh, and, and individuals and genders and ages. And, and we, we assign co-mediation teams. We design, we treat every single case, even though now we're helping hundreds of people every month, every case has a custom design component. Um, and we always remember this last point that housing conflict and also conflict with, with in business 
matters is fraught with emotion. So we, we always keep that top of mind. Go ahead, Tanya. I said way too much. So I should turn it back <laughs> over to you. No, thank you. I appreciate that. Everything is all good. Um, and so one thing I would like to do right now in light of um, what Roger just shared is just pose the question of whether or not you um, see a lot of homelessness in your areas. And if you do, what kinds of solutions are already in place? And Ishmael, can you please let me know if anyone is raising their hand or putting anything in the chat? Because I can't see everyone. Uh, not at the moment, uh, Tanya. Please. No. Uh, move okay. Forward. All right. Oh, uh, Nonopa has her name. Her hand raised. Oh goodness. Okay. Um, go, okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, this question is for Roger. I'd like to know more about the innovative project design. Like, how did you establish this design? Like, what matters? Um, what did you take into account when establishing this hybrid response of yours in the SIS program? Like, how did you go about it? That is a great question. And first of all, I should say that while I am an attorney and a, and a mediator, um, I spent 25 years working in business roles in commercial real estate all over the United States from, from Hawaii to New York, uh, primarily dealing with landlord-tenant conflict. And, and um, so from that, I, I just brought a lot of knowledge about how things work. And uh, one big idea that we bring to this work is that while we often, there are often legal issues there's regulation by government, there are lease documents, those things frame relationships in real estate, they're pointers, but they can't fix a roof or get the rent paid. And so sometimes we need lawyers to get us to the table to talk, but in real estate solutions are always practical. And that's just something I knew intuitively from all this background. So my, my the challenge was how do we, particularly given that it's funded by the city of San Francisco, they were, they were thinking in terms of classical mediation. Um, everybody at the bar was thinking of developing it that way. How do we get this done? Uh, frankly, doing some things that I, I, I knew was gonna make people uncomfortable. And the answer is Carol Kahn, who's not here today, ran cover for me and allowed me to do a lot of crazy things that um, we wouldn't otherwise would have pulled off. And I knew if we did them, it would work. And, and it would be very successful. We actually have a 97% success rate in our cases. And um, the, the, so the, the, the messaging, you know, it's not mediation, it's conflict intervention. Uh, we're constantly out meeting with people and visiting properties. Um, it's about landscape and human activity. Uh, this fast response and starting with an ombuds orientation, really get a full download. Much of what we do is give people really conflict coaching. A lot of things really folks just need to know how to respond to one another. Um, so there's a lot of practical real operating real estate communities, properties, complex properties, knowledge uh, that our program refl reflects. I don't know if I'm fully answering your question and I also wanna be mindful of time, um, yes, but that's, that's a start. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, so let's let's move on. Um, Roger, you've already mentioned this. So I do wanna talk about how we break um, or the, the case breakdown by issues. So we see a lot of different cases. Um, sometimes we get different cases in the run of a day, but 31% um, of the cases that we see are inter-resident conflict, 18% um, is re rent default. 6% of our cases have habitability issues. 3% involve harassment and our discrimination. 27% uh, are lease violations. 10% involve resident management conflict. And then 5% of the cases that we see involve hoarding. Um, you know, because of this uh, COVID-19 pandemic that we're experiencing right now, we 
have seen a lot of um, inter-resident conflicts. Uh, right now, I'm working on a case that was brought to me earlier this week, and it involves a master tenant and a subtenant who happen to be related. They are um, um, in-laws. So the master tenant is um, the brother-in-law of the subtenant who is a woman and she has a child. And so um, this case is interesting because it's, it seems relatively simple at first glance, but there are some familial issues that are um, underlying issues that I was able to pick up by talking to both parties separately. Now they live in the same house. Um, the brother-in-law took her in um, primarily because um, she's the mother of his niece. So it's interesting because I guess his brother doesn't live there um, anymore. She's not in a relationship with his brother anymore, but he took her in because she's the mother of his niece. Since March, she has not paid rent. Um, she has not tried to find a job or anything. And so by now the, the master tenant is a bit fed up and he wants her out. He wants her out, but he doesn't wanna seem like he's the bad guy and he doesn't want to um, destroy the relationship at least with his niece. And so they contacted CIS earlier this week and actually the subtenant contacted CIS and she was not sure if the master tenant, her brother-in-law would be willing to mediate. I told her, let me, give me a shot at it. Let me talk to him. And I gave him a call and he was not only thrilled to talk to me, but he was ready to, you know, get into whatever <laughs> um, I had to offer in terms of mediation. Now, one thing that he didn't wanna do though, he didn't want to meet uh, via Zoom type of situation, which is what we've been doing um, primarily since we are sheltering in place. So I told him, there's no need to do that. We can do a shuttle type of mediation and I can just go back and forth between them on phone calls. And so um, he's going to provide me with a list of terms because he still wants her out, but he wants her out in the most amicable way possible. So I told him, give me a date, a firm date for her to be out, but try to make it reasonable because her fear is she's not going to be able to come up with the money to um, put down um, first and last for a new apartment. So he was reasonable and he said, okay. And so his goal is to give her until January 31st. And so we did that all over the phone. We didn't even get on Zoom. And that is an, um, a, a classic type of uh, CIS case. So I just wanted to share that. And that is so much more that we do along the lines of um, um, roommate conflict. Okay. So as Roger Sorry, mentioned, we have an, oh, go ahead. I was just going to jump in for a moment. And by the way, if you yeah. see me looking away from the camera, it's because I have things on another screen that I'm referring to. I'm very much paying attention to everyone. So I thank you for the person who wondered what I was doing. Uh, um, I sent this morning, I sent Wangari a two page case study uh, that for some reason I cannot upload to the chat and perhaps she oh. can share it with you all later. <clears throat> but it is in two pages, it exemplifies all the components of our program, but most important, importantly, the, the connection between how we show up with deep connection and our capacity to be chameleons or shapeshifters. We adapt as necessary with enormous speed to meet the problem. And I didn't mention a key element of what we do that really distinguishes us from a lot of other, let's say traditional dispute resolution work. We're professional neutrals, but we practice neutral advocacy. We are outcome driven. That means we want a result that respects everyone 
adds value for everyone and in which no one becomes homelessness. And as, a, as our work has expanded to help many people with conflicts where homelessness is not imminent, but other things are involved, the, the same techniques apply. Uh, so the, this little case study shows how um, a, a very serious matter unfolded uh, in 36 hours where I spoke with a, a middle-aged middle African-American man in San Francisco on a Sunday afternoon. Uh, he couldn't believe I returned his call in 30 minutes on a Sunday. Uh, he was facing a loss of his home in a judicial hearing Tuesday morning, and he was very traumatized. Um, and so I handed, it, handed him off to someone in particular in our program. I, I got it all set up. We didn't have time to contact anybody else, find the housing provider. I needed to send somebody to show up at that hearing. And she showed up as a mediator and, and to help a, create a constructive conversation. But in the course of the hearing, when she saw what was happening and how this man was being railroaded, mostly through negligence, by management as opposed to bad actors. She shifted into being an advocate and the hearing officer was able to figure out what was going on and call a timeout on the whole process. And they're just, we're the only program I know of that has this capacity for moving rapidly from one role into another while, while honoring neutrality and conventional principles, but then you know, but we got the result we wanted, which the man is still his home today, a year later. So I give it back to you, Tanya. Yeah, and that's a great segue into what an incredible team we have. So as Roger mentioned, you know, we are comprised of attorneys, therapists, social workers, tenant advocates and property managers. And all of these individuals have a deep set of skills um, we work so well together and the way that we listen to um, the, the clients that call us, the tenants that call us is also very essential because sometimes we're listening with an ear to try to figure out if we are the best person to take the case or should we pass it off to one of our colleagues or should we collaborate? And so, for example, I got a call this week um, from a tenant who lives at a property um, that I'm very familiar with because every week since March, I've been on phone calls with the mayor's office of housing, which a bunch of different, um, with a bunch of different stakeholders. And I've become very familiar with um, all of the players in San Francisco around housing. So when she said where she lived, I thought immediately, I need to contact my colleague um, uh, one of my colleagues, her name is Mary, she's not here today, but she's very good um, and has a lot of connections with that particular community. And so when I contacted Mary, she, she kept thanking me for knowing to pass that off to her. She's like, you know, thank you so much because I've been waiting for a call like this. I know exactly who to connect her to. This woman um, owes over a year's worth of back rent because her recertification didn't go right. And um, she's tr they're trying to railroad her um, and not accept any payments from her. But had I not passed her off, who knows, right? So I think that's another um, really good aspect of CIS is that we have a team who are very much in tune to who is best um, to handle a particular case, okay? Um, and so I'll, I'll, I've already mentioned um, our team dynamic, but I wanna go a little bit deeper to let you know how, what we're made of. Um, so we have 62% attorneys, 23% are therapists, 63% are women, 37% are men, 43% is a diversity index, uh, generation Y, 12%, Generation X, 40%, and Boomers are 48%. So if you can see from this um, chart, we are well represented in every area. And like I mentioned, it's important and essential for us to know when we should keep a case, when we should collaborate with a, a colleague, 
or when we should pass it off. Um, I also have um, taken a case where there was a little bit of elder abuse. Um, the master tenant is an elderly man and the subtenant is a younger woman. And, um, you know, I had this case for a few weeks before I realized I need to have one of our therapists on my team um, because there's something more going on. And then um, we also um, brought in another mediator to help as well. And now that case is, has had a lot of traction and movement. Um, that particular master tenant's social worker will be doing a wellness check next week because <laughs> there's something going on more than I was able to determine. So if you can understand, that's why it's very important to have a, a team of individuals who are well qualified to, um, to handle um, certain cases. All right. I have a question, Tanya. This yes. is Jennifer. I yes. have a question. So okay. on that team demographics, because I happen to know yes. a, a tiny bit about your program, um, I'm thinking about the the fact, and I don't know if somebody mentioned it yet this morning, that you guys have a lot of different languages, um, oh, language capacities, yes. and I'd love to see yes. what that looks like. First, first of all, on this team demographics piece, but could you just mm -hmm. speak a little bit to that the multilingual aspect of the um, uh, CIS staff? Oh, that's a great question. Thanks for asking that. So yes, we mm -hmm. have not only um, is our team well diverse in the areas that I've already mentioned, but a lot of our team members speak multiple languages, right? We have people who speak um, Spanish. Um, we have people who speak um, um, uh, what is it? Uh, Cantonese and um, some of the other um, languages that are uh, amongst the Chinese people. Um, I speak a little bit of Swahili, um, <laughs> but don't put me on the spot. <laughs> um, we also have um, individuals who, I believe some people who speak sign language. Um, Roger, correct me if I'm wrong about that. I think we have three now. And and uh, thank you, Jennifer, for raising this because it's it was a critical part of of uh, program design, San Francisco being one of the most diverse cities in the United States. So the probably the biggest numbers of people in the city of San Francisco that are non-English speakers are, would be first Spanish, second, uh, the various Chinese dialects, also big components of Russian and various Middle Eastern languages, um, uh, Korean. So we, if we don't have somebody who is part of our staff or contract mediators who is proficient in a particular language, we have access through our lawyer referral service to um, other languages and we also budget for interpreters. And many times we have, the other day we had a trilingual mediation going on and doing that by Zoom with, we had three different mediators assigned partly for the skills, but also for language. So uh, some of these get pretty fun and I talk about the fun a lot. We're a joyful lot. We're helping people that are traumatized, uh, but we bring smiles with us and, and people find their way to smiles in the process, even though it remains tough work. And sometimes, you know, people are deeply, deeply traumatized. I'm not trying to make light of that, but rather the joy is a conscious element of applying our solutions to deliver the value and the hope people need. And that gets people to yes. Yeah, and um, again, thank you, Jennifer, for bringing that up because it reminds me of some other case collaborations that I've done where um, one of the parties was fully Spanish speaking and then the other party spoke English and my colleague um, who spoke Spanish interpreted for uh, the Spanish speaking tenant while I um, directly communicated with um, the English speaking tenant. And that was very successful. Those collaborations are often very, very successful. All right, so community impact. We've served so many clients uh, since the inception. It's just wonderful to see. Um, in 2017, 377 cases. 
2018, 656 cases, and 2019, 942 cases. And as Roger mentioned earlier, um, there's a com combined average success rate over the three years of 97.5%. And this success is measured by verifying that residents are still housed um, six months following a case closure, either in their original residence or by relocation connected to a settlement agreement. And so that is exactly what is going on with the case I mentioned that I'm working on um, most currently where the party, um, the master tenant wants that subtenant out, but we were able to, I was able to um, help him understand that, you know, let's get a firm date and have her give her time to save up um, so that she can have money to put down on a new apartment. So that's exactly what we're speaking about when we say um, relocated uh, or a relocation connected to a settlement agreement. Tanya, right, let me add something here too, very okay. quickly. So first of all, this slide is a bit out of date and it's hard to understand these numbers because there's cases and there's multiple parties and we, this slide, uh, those numbers came from a particular way of measuring we don't use anymore. But that really connects to this more important plank of the program that I haven't mentioned, which is to educate people on the importance of early intervention in conflict. You know, don't wait till you've got a lawsuit nailed to your door to call us. And, and of course, the greatest education on these points, the most effective has been with the housing providers who began to see, you know, an experienced property manager knows when someone is getting into trouble, sometimes a year or two before they actually have to try to kick them out of a property. So, so we now say, particularly with the, the continuing huge up screen, uh, uptick in the amount of people we help, we have probably can say that we've, we've saved pushing 3,000 people from homelessness since we got rolling in 2017. But many more, uh, probably, I don't know, some multiple of that number have received value from us, assistance, mediation, coaching, whatever, that interrupts their march towards a situation that could result in loss of home. And this is where the, the huge value add is and the city sees it and we're, we're, we're relieving um, uh, the city, the, not just the courts, but uh, lawyers and many other things that the city pays for. We're reducing those expenditures by getting involved with things earlier, um, which also makes it easier to, to restore the relationship and fix the problems. So uh, doing a, prob a program like ours, we, we would love to help you set, set similar things up uh, like this using our ideas anywhere you are. It, the speed and the early intervention kind of motif uh, allows you to really help a lot more people over a period of time than you could if you were simply addressing cases when they were at maximum conflict and things were about to explode. Ishmael, I wonder if you, did I say that in a way that makes any sense, Ishmael or Tanya or anybody else? Um, yes, absolutely, Roger. And I'm sure we'll qualify, qualify that more once we open it up to discussion and question. Uh, so we can address that as specifically. Um, I'm sure our audience probably have some qualifying question. Uh, so uh, Tanya, if you would uh, lead us through the rest of this slide so we can open it to question and answer. Yeah, so we've, we've actually made it to the last slide here. Um, and this is the future of housing conflict management. Um, as you all know, based upon the times that we're in right now, online dispute resolution platforms are very valuable. As Ishmael um, alluded to earlier this week, um, it's, it's such a valuable platform that's able to serve jurisdictions, entire jurisdictions around the globe. So, I mean, this is what is allowing us to be able to be in Africa and in America at the same time right now. Um, and so um, we have some numbers from British Columbia's Residential Tent Board, uh, Ten Tennessee Board, which serves the province of 5,071,000 residents via a central online resource demonstrating a potential model 
for not only for California, I think for everyone right around the world. Um, so some of the recent RTB statistics are they have over 250,000 website visits, uh, over 200,000 responses to help requests, 27,000 disputes resolved, mediated and adjudicated proceedings, 156 team members, including um, 65 information officers, 47 mediators and arbitrators, 23 IT policy and compliance officers, 12 data managers and nine admin. So here's the website, check it out when you have an opportunity. Um, but this just goes to show you the power in when we connect as a, as a world on a global scale. And that's what ODR is able to offer. So with that said, um, that's, this is the last slide. I'm gonna open it up to any questions or comments at this time. And I'm also mindful um, that we are at 10.02, which is, I'm not sure what time it is in Africa, but an hour later than what we started with. So maybe maybe 10 out there as well, PM, I'm not sure. It is, I believe, 9 p.m. EAT, nine. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Uh, Tanya, if we can stop the screen share, then we can see our participant, sure. then we can be, yep. uh, we make sure we um, address. Uh, Vangari, please go ahead. Lovely. Uh, thank you very much, Tanya, for the presentation. Uh, that overview definitely gives all of us uh, uh, clarity on what uh, CIS uh, does and what uh, uh, we actually have been uh, anxiously waiting for. I think the, the sessions we've had with you in the earlier part of the week have made this a very appetizing one as we've been warming up um, to this particular oh. session. Yeah, yeah, they were appetizers. So. <laughs> and it's uh, then, yes, uh, so thank you so much. I know colleagues have uh, questions and inquiries, and you will kindly allow me to um, uh, pick on two people first to give us um, uh, their, their, their comments, their, their, their comments um, as, 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 as speakers. We have uh, Honorable Washika uh, Washira, who's on the call. And uh, Honorable Washika, the invitation is, um, Honorable Washika has been a, a senior. Uh, resident magistrate uh, in the judiciary of Kenya. And so we would like to hear her insights from the discussion you've given, what are her views, uh, now that she understands that, let me say the judiciary, I mean, how would this work? And yes, so Honorable Ashika, kindly, we may have your, your remarks. And then um, after that, you kindly allow me to invite uh, Kimutai Terono um, earlier to just give his remarks. Then uh, after they've given their, their remarks, you'll kindly, if, if there's any response, you could respond and then we will invite our chief guest for his message and then we can open up kindly. Thank Ondra you Boshika. so much. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my pre predecessors, Ismail and Tonya. Thank you for whatever you are doing at Conflict Intervention Service. Now in Kenya, we have got uh, rent tribunals where if there is a dispute between landlord and tenant, uh, some, some matters are settled uh, in the rent tribunal. We also have courts. We have some cases that are taken to courts as uh, debts, so that now uh, in the process, we have auctioneers who come in uh, to assist in debt collection. But unfortunately, some uh, tenants go through eviction. They are evicted by their tenants because of non-payment of, uh, of rent. And uh, we are also moving into mediation. Mediation has started uh, onset into Kenya and some people are now moving into mediation to settle uh, landlord tenant conflicts. What I'd like to say is that uh, from the onset of uh, COVID-19, after it's, it's affected businesses, most people have lost their jobs and most people are unable to pay rents. What we have seen most landlords do in Kenya is uh, some have given some cut of percentage to their tenants so that tenants are able to meet their rental pay at the end of the month. And also in the Kenyan government, our president has initiated agenda four. There are four agendas that the president is working on. And one of those agendas is uh, housing, affordable housing. And the government is looking into how Kenyans can have affordable housing so that to solve this issue of, uh, of uh, homelessness. And uh, we also know that uh, in East Africa, we have, uh, uh, refugees, those who are running away from their countries because of conflict, because of wars, 
Kenya hosts uh, refugees in Dadaab and Kakuma. And this is through UNHCR. Member countries uh, contribute money and it is given to UNHCR and UNHCR takes care of refugees in Kakuma and, uh, and Dadaab. Then in Kenya, after the new constitution of 2010, we have 47 counties. And in these 47 counties, we have governors. And these governors also assist uh, people who are affected through, for example, weather, where, where we have uh, uh, issues of weather and uh, people are bound to be homeless. We have the weather department who gives us a lot. They give us a lot that there's likely to be heavy rainfall. Kindly, those who are on this side, you are likely to be affected and you might be homeless, shift. And Kenyans are advised to shift and they shift earlier. But in case people are caught and they are homeless, we have uh, rapid response teams headed uh, in each county and other Kenyans come in together to respond to assist. All in all, I can say that uh, some disputes don't, uh, don't end up being settled uh, uh, in, a, in an out of court settlement, some end up in court. And in fact, some end up in tribunals. And now we are introducing mediation as a quick access to promote justice. So what I've learned from uh, my predecessor in conflict intervention service, perhaps this is high time that Kenya has to borrow leave of what CIS is doing. So that instead of uh, leaving the government to fight and help stop homelessness, we can have something created either through this forum, uh, maybe Wangari can organize. We see how uh, mediators can come together to us to sell ourselves of how we can handle some of this uh, conflict between tenants and landlords, because they do exist out of uh, what I've said, the effects of COVID-19. So I take this juncture to stop at that moment so that I give my colleagues an opportunity they, they share, then uh, we learn from each other what happens. Thank you, Wangari. Okay. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Nebuloshika, for your, your comments. Uh, yes, very valuable. Uh, mediators come from diverse backgrounds, and those backgrounds are extremely valuable in the development of this work. But also something else that's uh, critical and important is that these are our own communities. So we understand, we appreciate what really happens. These are also our own experiences. They're not experiences for people who are out there. Even ourselves, we are in landlord-tenancy uh, relationship or, um, or, 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 or similar ones. Um, I am not very sure right now. I see Kimutai, Chimutai, Kimutai Ch Cherono on the call uh, right now. So I would like to request uh, Tonya. Would you have any 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 comments based on uh, uh, what uh, Honorable Washika has said before we move to the next part, Tonya? Or just I'll just say that it sounds like from uh, what Washika said that you're um, you're very ripe for a CIS type of program um, in your jurisdiction. Um, it sounds you know we we definitely um, cater to landlord tenant conflicts as I mentioned and as Roger mentioned, the earlier that you get in front of the conflict, the more likely you can have positive results towards um, preventing eviction. So it sounds like um, there is a huge opportunity there for you all to come together to put a program in place. As I was going to mention earlier, um, with COVID-19, we've seen a, a large uptick in homelessness. And we also see lawmakers and legislators trying to come up with solutions to homelessness. Because like I said, Homelessness is not in a vacuum. It affects everything, right? It's like a, a ripple effect. So there's a ripe opportunity. Um, I guess uh, Wangari is gonna share the case study with you all, but please use us as a resource to help um, get your program started. Roger um, seems like he has something to say. Yeah, thank you, Tanya. Uh, what I got to thinking about from, from uh, our colleague who shared a moment ago uh, was, you know, we're, we're adapting our approach all the time and also in our efforts to bring similar services to other places and we encounter various resistance. Alan and I know a lot about that up here in the state of Washington. Um, I've become to see things a little differently. So when I heard the reference to, uh, from a public policy standpoint, 
uh, you're looking at developing, you know, more large-scale affordable housing opportunities. There's the refugee crisis that's related. Um, you know, anytime, especially when you throw a lot of traumatized people together in in one small geographic area, you're going to have these issues. But instead of you know trying to get people to think of an entirely new program, it can be about importing the thinking or some specialists. Um, to assist, it sounds like if you have a if you have a residential tribunal like they have in British Columbia, which is parallel to the civil resolution tribunal you all heard about earlier this week, um, it, it, you don't need to start with something new, but you can add things and you can change up people's thinking. So we we talk a lot now about housing retention. We do a lot of training with property managers and other professionals, social workers who are in the, the housing zone, particularly affordable and supportive housing, we train them in, you know, how do you de-escalate conflict? Uh, just, just we, you know, we teach them mediation skills to help with their jobs. And then we emphasize that there are sometimes, uh, it's simply that a neutral third party needs to show up briefly to reset the table. People have stopped listening to one another. In the property management community in particular, the way they're trained and the way many of them, the skills and, and the perspective people that are attracted to that work, the way they are, first of all, they're very, they're, uh, they, their jobs are you know, sacred to them in some respects, especially they know they're providing roofs over people's heads that they wouldn't otherwise have. And sometimes property managers say to me, well, what you're describing is my job. So they're worried if they ask for help, that you know, somehow they're gonna be subject to criticism. So we, we've thought about that a lot and presented our ideas differently. So we, and we say the same thing to the lawyers. We're not here to replace you. We're here to add value. We're here to do perhaps a small thing. But the most important idea to remember we say to everyone is sometimes like parents and children, people just stop listening to one another and we come in, disrupt what's going on, reset things and then leave. So we emphasized we can come and go, we can come in fast, take off, bring us back later or not. So flexibility um, and resetting the table is, is, it's easier to get people to adapt to those things and think in terms of let's build a new program, which they may see as competitive or somehow creating other problems. Excellent points. Okay. Um, okay, thank you very yeah, thank you so much for that uh, th that that reaction uh, following in Washika. I, I really thank you for um, especially just taking us to the context of also the 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 the, the refugee the refugees uh, let me say situation or structure in Kenya because yeah Kenya being a host then even in the cities we actually are having quite a number of uh, persons who are not let's say from Kenya and they are here on refugee status or the alien status. And so that also brings in um, unique, uh, let me say, unique arrangements or that uh, need to be considered when it comes to landlords and tenancy uh, uh, situation. We would like to invite our performing artists, and that is uh, Colin Kennedy Moy, to give us um, an interlude at this particular juncture. Colin? Colin, how are you? Hi, and then, I am doing good. Thank you. And then we'll be followed by, we will invite our uh, chief guest for today, who is uh, Reverend Father Peter Gishure from the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, right after Colin. Colin, kindly. All right, thank you so much for the chance. And uh, the song I'd like to perform is in a uh, language called Kikuyu. And um, it speaks about a person who loves uh, their lady so much that they would wait even when the wild animals tried to catch them, it was something traditional, sort of a traditional setback. Even if the wild animals tried to kill him, he'd still wait for his lover. Even if whatever happened to him, he'd still wait for the lover. So enjoy through the song. <laughs> Coreo Ninamo, Wedwa Wetere, 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 Wedwa Wetere, 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 Wedwa Wetere, 
Allow me at this juncture, after we have got an uh, internet to use this opportunity to welcome Reverend Professor uh, Peter Gishure, who's uh, the Director, School of Graduate Studies and uh, the Acting Academic Linkages Coordinator at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, commonly referred to as uh, Queer, to, who is our chief guest today. And he has been the chief guest also at our opening ceremony. And so he's holding the fort for us. Uh, specifically on the theme, peace flow as a river. Welcome, Father Gishure. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Wangare. I'm happy to be your chief guest at this uh, very important talk about uh, uh, conflict management, or even conflict uh, uh, resolution, especially how we can be able to bring people at peace uh, in my days in the uh, in the University of Notre Dame, uh, I learned from one professor called John Ladrack that ultimately, with all these tribunals, all these uh, mediations that, uh, that we have, that the ultimate goal should be a conflict transformation, so that we can be able to make people. Uh, be able to be at peace, because peace is very important. And uh, in my opening uh, uh, talk, I talked about restorative justice as very important. Uh, yes, when people are conflicting over house rent or any other thing, it's very, they are very emotive at that time. And it's good that we able to resolve that problem or manage it before it, be, it escalates. But ultimately, we need that we can also go a step further and create within our systems when people have been, we have resolved a, a, a case or that people can also be able to transform uh, that conflict uh, and they can still live together and see each other as friends. Uh, recently, uh, Pope Francis uh, wrote an encyclical called Fratelli Tutti. And in that encyclical, he's, in fact, he's in fact, uh, emphasizing on friendship. The people have lost the ability that we can disagree on something, and yet we can still become friends. Or what has made us to be in conflict can also be used. We can transform it and we can still be friends and live in peace. Uh, for, for us to be able to achieve this, I think it's very important to know that the attitude in modern world, uh, the, the people approach conflict 
or disagreement or each other in this method. One, they say either I reject the person or I tolerate the person, but we are told in the conflict transformation, we have to accept the person. In this world, we have no room to reject people or even to tell somebody I'm tolerating you, meaning unless somebody is doing a crime or something that is unethical. But if somebody like uh, our friend uh, Colin Moy has sung us, here in Kenya, some people would say, why sing in, in that language? Uh, and they say, I don't want to hear that. But the moment we start accepting others in their otherness, it is very important. Uh, and that is what, uh, those are the things that we can be able to put within the tools we have in uh, what is a tribunal. Uh, I, I had uh, uh, Judge uh, Washika talking about uh, the, the tribunal. Sometimes people leave this tribunal in a, in a very desperate situation. And some people even threaten each other. And then we have been called uh, to be able to say that, yes, we, we can do this and that's our work. But for the survival of humanity, which has been conflicting for since time immemorial, we need uh, this uh, conflict transformation where we must be able to preach that people must learn how to live with each other. They must accept and to do that, and to do this, the we this is a matter of calling people to be sensitive to other people, to be courteous, whether driving, whether when you are talking, to be generous, and to have some sort of positivity. But um, the modern world is always uh, uh, we versus them. And that is uh, something that can bring a lot of uh, uh, conflict. Lastly, uh, when we are thinking about bringing peace to people, it's also to, uh, good to let, especially here in Kenya and in Africa in general, the people must be taught uh, the three uh, ways of arriving at peace of of anything that we do. And that is, it's like the three-legged stool. And the Africans have a stool that is three-legged. And they say the three legs of this stool of peace is that we must learn how to do research. Then we educate ourselves, we learn and see why, where these things came from. And lastly, we go for the action. Uh, many times people start with the actions, then they start doing the research. Uh, I've seen, and uh, probably uh, Justice Washika can uh, bear witness to this, when, whenever there's conflict, people come with a problem, but they don't have even supporting documents. They have not even, they don't even know what, what is their right. They, they have not done the research to see what they want from this, uh, is it feasible? Is it uh, desirable? But they just come, I want my land. They don't even do a background check to see whether that land was sold long time ago to some by somebody else. And then when the things go wrong, that the, the conflict management or resolution goes against them or the mediation, they start feeling bad. They, 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 are, at, they are not at peace. It's because we, we, they don't want to do research. So the, and, and I'm talking this mostly for the, those from Kenya and Africa or in this uh, webinar, that we must tell people that they must not do research. Then the people must also understand we call it education. They must educate themselves. What is the problem? What do I want? Uh, is, it the, is this the most desirable? And lastly, 
then they can now go to resolving the conflict. And within that, uh, then even conflict transformation will be uh, possible, where the tribunal will make a lot of sense, and all the that we have will be accepted. But because most people uh, don't want, they just say, I want this, and that is it. Well, I don't care whether I'm right or wrong, there's no uh, consideration of about ethics, etc. But once people learn that you will never be at peace if you do not allow yourself to be disposed to what is true, what is noble, and what is desirable, then you will always be at war within yourself and with other people. So thank you very much, and I think it is this. Uh, uh, it has been very enriching to uh, know what has been happening, and I hope that my few words will help a uh, development of the tools to make it even better. Where we shall say we are living in a world where we accept each other for who we are. Thank you. Okay, I invite us uh, where we all are to please uh, give Father a round of applause for uh, his message uh, for today. And uh, the message that uh, I think we are left with, with uh, which um, uh, from Father as, uh, uh, as practitioners, research, educate, action. And in the work that we do, and it's not only about mediation, is it true? Is it noble? Is it desirable? And it reminds me of the rotary uh, four-way tests when any when you're doing anything. And so thank you very much, uh, uh, Reverend uh, Father Gishure, who is our chief guest for uh, this forum today, Reverend Father Peter Gishure. Reverend Professor uh, Peter Gishure is a direct is a director, School of Graduate Studies and Academic Linkages, coordinator at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa, one of the universities in the country that um, hosts a business school, the School of Medicine, there's a School of Law, and also a diverse, uh, I mean, other, others, other, other schools. Father, you may kindly mention the schools that the university has, just for our uh, purposes. Uh, theology, yes, kindly. Yeah, yeah. so our, our university is a, a theological institute, but now it has grown into a big university. We are going to be started with the Faculty of Education, then we went to the School of Business. Then we went to the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences with so many degrees. We then went to Faculty of Science. With, we have the uh, Faculty of School of Law. Uh, we have the Center for Social Justice and Ethics. We have the Institute of Canon Law. We have the Center for uh, Regional Integration. And we, we, are, we are developing all kinds of uh, uh, programs that are going to meet the need uh, for the society today, especially in the areas where we are going, in, we are going to have transformative leaders, transformative ethical leaders. And we, we also, uh, our niche as a university is the uh, integration of people and also uh ethics and is very important because uh, so we try uh, to incorporate ethics in every uh, program that we teach so that, uh, when the people come to the society they can be a conscience whether in the banking sector in schools in law etc thank you very much thank you okay uh, th thank you very much, uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure, for your remarks and also for enlightening us about the uh, Catholic University as an institution. Allow me at this juncture to uh, invite uh, Colin uh, for uh, the second part of the interlude. Colin, Colin Kennedy Moy, who is our artist for our event today. Colin, welcome. Yes. Karibusana, yes, we see you. Thank you. Uh, it sounds very low, Colin. 
kind uh, Colin, it sounds very low. Kindly, yes, your volume. All right. You may speak. All right. Can you hear me now? Yes, I hear you much better. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So the yes. song is by our very own Eric Oinaina, and uh, it speaks about the peace that we yearn as a country, the peace, the love, and the togetherness. And uh, do enjoy. It's in Swahili. Uh, do enjoy. Mojandi fahari ndugundi yangu chuki na ukabila hatutaki hatakamwe lazima tuungane tuijenge nchi yetu wasiwe hata moja anayetenganisha Naishi, natumaini, najitolea daima Kenya. Hakika ya bendera, ni udhabiti wa. Nye usia wana nchi na nye kundu ni adamu. Kijani ni yaki, eluji ya amani. Daima mimi mkenya, mwana nchi mzalendo. Kwa uchungu na mateso, kwa vilio na uzuni. Tulinya kuli wa uhuru, na mashuja wa zamani. Hawa kushtushwa na risasi. Au kufungwa gereza ni Nia yao mkombozi Kuvunja pingu za ukoloni Naishi, natumaini Najitolea daima Kenya Hakika ya bendera Ni udhabiti wangu Nye usia wana nchi na nye Kundu ni adamu, kijani ni yaki, nye upea amani. Daima mimi mkenya, mwana nchi mzalendo. Thank you. The high fives, the claps uh, for uh, Colin during this particular interlude. And uh, Colin, we are really, uh, yeah, I think yeah, you, you've, you, you've taken the highlight. Father had just taken it, and I think you're, eh, you're just about to start uh, picking up, picking it from him. So Father, with the Reverend Father uh, Peter Gishura, we thank you for, and uh, I would say that uh, the, 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 the song by, by Colin just now actually resonated with your message. Uh, it actually says that, yes, I am a Kenyan, and uh, the, that I value, yes, I value peace. And I think all along when we are having the, no, this, these discussions, that we, we are going back that as human beings, that's what we are seeking for um, in, in, in this life. So thank you very much, uh, Colleen, for that uh, interlude. Uh, kindly allow me to invite uh, one of the uh, collaborating partners for uh, this uh, forum, and that is uh, Caleb Kusienya to give um, his, 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 uh, his remarks. Then after that, we will invite uh, Nonopa, Nonopa uh, Vonda, who, Vanda, who is uh, a young mediator from South Africa, to also hear um, what her views and her remarks are based on the discussion for today. So the discussion for today is on landlord-tenant mediation in housing. Yes, the discussion for today is on landlord-tenant mediation in housing and conflicts in uh, commercial uh, real estate. And uh, we've been having, a, we've, or we are on a case study Okay, thank you. Yes, uh, we have a case study of the Conflict Intervention Service that is CIS by the Bar Association of San Francisco, uh, USA, which is a mediation service that's keeping uh, people housed in San Francisco and beyond. So actually designed to uh, reduce on homelessness or even to eliminate it. We have also received uh, our, our guest, uh, chief guest's message from uh, uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure, the Director of School of Graduate Studies and Academic 
uh, acting acad academic linkages coordinator at the Catholic University of Eastern Africa. We also got remarks uh, from uh, Honorable Washika Washira with regard to uh, the, uh, her, her views on uh, the housing situation in Kenya and also based on the discussion today. So kindly allow me to invite uh, Caleb Kusienya and then uh, we can invite Nonupa Vanda for also her views uh, from South Africa. Caleb Kusienya. Uh, uh, greetings, everyone. Okay, greetings to you. Sorry, unfortunately, my video is not uh, behaving, <laughs> but bear with me on that. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm, Caleb, I'm very... kindly. Uh, kindly yes. uh, let, me, let me have Nonopa first because yeah, there is something showing on your screen and we think we need it down there. Yeah? So you sure, just no problem. Yes. Okay. Kindly, okay. Hello. Very well. Am I audible? Yes. Nonopa, we can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. First, I'd just like to thank um, the guys who are presenting from the SIS program. I, I learned a lot, actually. I had no idea that such programs exist. And also I'd like to thank the guys from, was it just this program? Oh, the information you've given us on, I don't think my video can start. Oh yeah, okay, cool. The information you've given us on the Canadian system because Canada seems to be far ahead when it comes to dispute resolution. Cause I remember when I was in the Pateras Law School Legal Tech Essentials Program, um, the chair of the Civil uh, Resolution Tribunal, CRT, Shannon. Shannon taught us a lot about how Canada is resolving civil disputes through ODR in Canada. It's a quick system, same as the one we we're introduced to, the RTB. It's the same as the RTB and it resolves disputes of all kinds, civil media, matters, etc. And my point here is that here in South Africa, there's basically a housing crisis, particularly now during COVID, we saw a spike in the number of uh, tenants that are being evicted, some unlawfully, because the president would release maybe a uh, communique and say that uh, people shouldn't be evicted from their homes and the landlords would basically defy this and evict people nonetheless. So there is a dire need for uh, ODR, such as the CIS program here in South Africa, because there is indeed a crisis. And recently, the, the only commission we have to resolve disputes is the CCMA. The CCMA recently, I think it shut down temporarily because they claim they have above 500,000 disputes unresolved and they lack manpower and the commissioners basically to head these programs. So yeah, I think a program such as the CIS program is something we should definitely head here in South Africa. And I, I, I think we should maintain communication with the directors or I don't know, the managers of CIS so that we can have something to that effect here in South Africa as well. Yeah, that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Nonopa, for your remarks. And uh, uh, I, I believe that uh, if, if, even if we were to talk about uh, 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 a country like Kenya and let's say South, South Africa, Excuse if we are to talk about, yeah, if we talk about, yeah, if you talk about Kenya, South Africa, or really anywhere in the world, we are saying that people are looking for, they want a home. People want a home. We want to have a home, want to feel cared yes. for. And I think what we, what the conflict intervention service is actually pointing out is that mediators can be at the center of this to ensure that really everyone knows that even if it's not working, that these are people who are known as the mediators. I know in the last session, we were trying to get, uh, are you navigators or are you coaches? You know, a, a, a term for uh, you professionals, when I say you, I mean now mediators, a term that people would uh, be able to, uh, understand be able to appreciate and they would get it from the onset when you say that uh, that is what um, that is what you do um i see that uh, well, caleb may be joining us as uh, uh, yet again uh, i don't know tonya would you have any 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 comments or any remarks before uh, we can now open again we can open again and we will be able to have uh, general comments from the colleagues who are on the call so colleagues uh, after tonya's comments uh, if you have any co uh, any comments or reactions 
uh, the floor is open for us. Um, I see a comment from Okenya. Thank you, members. Uh, you will never be a champion of knowledge, hence borrowed. I have learned about the three legs of peace from uh, Professor Gishure. Uh, God bless you. And uh, yes, that is a message from um, Okenya, Okenya, who's a mediator here in Kenya. So Tonya, over to you kindly, and then we can now uh, toss the ball now to uh, any of the colleagues who would like to add uh, to the discussion. And colleagues, kindly allow me to remind you that uh, our intention is to be able to develop, to come up with what's a, a strategy that enables us to be able to serve uh, part, the, the sectors that we've been in discussion um, in. So if you may share your comments and views of how we can approach it, that would be very, very encouraging. Tonya, kindly, thank you. Yes, I'll just say to Nonopa that um, we are definitely open to continuing the conversation with you. Um, please call on us, you know, I will, I don't know if, if you provided my information, Wangari, to everyone, but um, you can also find me on LinkedIn. And uh, I do want to keep in touch with you all. And um, it sounds like South Africa is also ripe for a similar program, or maybe not, you know, cookie cutter CIS, but pulling on yeah. some of the aspects of CIS to help build um, your mediation practice even further. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Roger put my information in the chat box. So um, please, please contact us. We would love to continue the conversation with you, Nonopa. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Tonya. Uh, I see Caleb is back. Caleb, would you be uh, able to speak now? And colleagues, uh, after Caleb or as Caleb is settling in, do we have, uh, if you have any remarks with regard to the presentation today or any questions, um, they, are, they, are, they are welcome. Caleb? Uh, Tonya, as Caleb is, uh, is settling in and anyone else with, with questions, may, may I make a request if you could put up the slide that had the statistics kindly? Yeah, as we get Caleb. Yes, Caleb, I see you unmuted. Are you able to speak now? Yeah, um, am I heard? Yes, am yes, I we can hear you. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, like I was saying earlier, I just want to start with um, my gratitude to Wasiliana Hub. Uh, this has been epic, much as I missed uh, much of it, but um, just being able to put all this together is not a mean task. And I just want you to know that um, we are very grateful. I know I'm not mm -hmm. speaking for myself alone when I say that. And please keep up the amazing job. And secondly, I would um, just want to say that um, I've, I've learned quite a lot from this forum from each and every person that has um, been on this platform. And personally, I'm going to put it to practice. It's not, it's not just going to be, it was a good forum, we learned and whatnot. I want to put every lesson I've picked from here in practice so that God willing come next year, when we have another forum again, I'll be able to tell how much it has impacted on my practice and on my organization. And then also I wanted to ask a question about um, going forward in terms of this platform. Now we've been here, um, we've interacted, but as Wasiliana Hub, how do you plan to make sure that um, it, it goes on instead of waiting until another mediation week towards the end of next year. How can we network and make sure that we consistently keep in touch and we keep learning and gaining more information from every person that has been on this, on this platform? Other than that, I just want to say I'm grateful and God bless everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Uh, thank you. I can, uh, I can you. quickly address uh, getting together frequently. The, the, the time difference is a challenge, but 
Um, we engage, we collaborate with groups uh, here on the West Coast of North America in Canada, California, Washington, and other places. Uh, we started coming together in COVID for online best practices uh, meetings, and they're very they're very fluid, and, and we and we really just share, particularly for people who are not familiar with online work, uh, how we've adapted, and those have grown into other things. Our CIS program has a, a, a forum. Unfortunately, it's noon our time, which is in the, I think it's in the middle of you know it's eleven o'clock at night uh, or later for, for you, and we may adjust it next year to make it easier for you to join us. Uh, but everyone's welcome. And if if you would write us, we will get you on our list. There are people that drop in from Europe and we've had some folks from, from uh, the Antipodes. Uh, and so if we wanna stay connected with you too, and we will make that possible through some events that are easy to join. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Roger, for that, um, for those remarks. Um, I think when I, sum, when I pick, what I pick from Roger is that uh, it takes the community to develop the community and to be, and in that, then it's able to develop the work because we bring in uh, the competencies and also we bring in what is our hungers and what is uh, my best, what is your best. And when you tie that together and what's also our differences, then the, that's when the magic happens. And the African International Mediation Week is an example of that because it is a collaboration of uh, uh, a number of uh, mediation centers and also training institutions in Kenya and also uh, within East Africa. And we hope to see this uh, much, much more uh, yeah, or, uh, or, and because we are not limited in our ability to collaborate even from outside. Thank you, Roger, for the mention on the, uh, the list. And uh, yes, when you share it, we will share it openly in the group and, mem and um, mediators are able to kick, I mean, can choose to be able to join off, to join in. Um, I wish to invite uh, mediator Fred Committee. Fred Committee, point it out, so you'd have remarks. Fred Committee. Am I seeing him on the call? I saw you had remarks. Okay. And we do have a question in the chat box before we go to Fred. If, if, yes, um, yes. Can we address it? Someone is asking us yes, to please. remind them about, um, it says, kindly remind us about contributing psychology and counseling knowledge to be integrated with mediation. And so um, I can speak to that. I don't know if um, Roger or Ismail would like to speak to it as well, but it's very uh, essential. Um, to have, well, I wouldn't say essential, but it's it's helpful um, to have an understanding and even perhaps someone on your team who is a professional um, in the areas of psychology and, and um, counseling, because sometimes there, you know, when you meet with clients, there are issues that are underlying um, to the, the issues that are presenting themselves as the conflict. Um, and if you have this ability to get under that um, facade of what they're presenting and understand that, you know, they're coming from a place of um, feeling like, oh, I'm being neglected again, or, you know, this person is reminding me of my parent or any kind of um, issue like that. When you listen to the person relay what's going on, um, sometimes bringing a counselor, a person with a counseling background or psychology background can help get to those underlying issues and help um, really resolve the issue in a way that, or the matter in a way that is sustainable. Um, so I don't know if Ishmael or Roger would like to add to that, but I, I just know that in my practice, um, having the well, ability to, to yeah, yeah, I will. This connects, Tanya, to something you said early on that I want to go back to. That, uh, and, and we we continue to work as an integrated team, and we call on on each other for help all the time. So it's whoever has the particular additional skill or experience or cultural perspective that we may need quickly 
to be part of the puzzle solving process, we reach out to one another. Um, this week, I have been working with a young woman who is um, an extremely high functioning, brilliant person uh, who's living on the margins because of mental illness. She's been sober a long time, but she does not want to take the psych meds. So many people are in this dilemma. They, they don't like how it makes them feel. So she's unable to function despite having a couple of PhDs. And she contacted me with a garden variety problem. She, the place she's living in is filled with mold. She wants to move out into a new place. So she's got one lease that she needs help getting rid of that obligation. She needed help signing up a new lease. She's got family members helping her and have money to contribute, but she doesn't want to talk to them. And right now she's trusting me. So I needed to bring in one of our therapists just to help get her to de-escalate and stay calm while I deal with the, what is a garden variety real estate negotiation. And so she doesn't want to talk to anybody else right now because she trusts me. And of course that's precious to me. I also know that that could shift quickly. So I already have somebody lined up who I'm bringing in from the side to help this woman with a very specific component of what we're doing. And she's accepted to get the help, not really understanding that I'm bringing in a psychiatric nurse who's deeply compassionate and has much more experience than I will ever have in dealing with someone like that in the moment. So they feel loved and can be held while, and then I can go off and do the other things that I, I can't get done until she kind of just takes a time out. I don't know if that makes any sense, but we do these things very fluidly and we're interdependent on one another. And that is something I really cherish about our program and that we consciously encourage in a, in a variety of ways. I did put in a link, by the way, to um, our open forum this coming Wednesday. Anybody who wants to stay up late at night, it's gonna be unusual. We're gonna have some guest people. Uh, the three people that are we're bringing in all have a background in child dependency uh, work, um, but they're, they're now doing, two of them are our are, are primary mediators with CIS and one from British Columbia who's helping us do the work up there. Uh, so it's really just gonna be about who they are and their personal story. So please join us if you can, and there'll be more opportunities in future. Thank you, thank you, Roger. Thank you, uh, Tonya. Uh, we are getting into, into, the, into the closing segment. We will uh, give uh, a minute in case there's anybody who has uh, any remarks uh, that they wish to be able to give in to the discussion. Something, let me jump in again without interrupting because I want to hear from others. Something's in the chat that reminded me of a situation early on in CIS. A very traumatized woman uh, from the Caribbean um, faced eviction. I saw one of the few people I saw in person. She, she had been a Calypso singer, gone around the world. The only way she was comfortable talk, communicating her story was through song, which she did. I introduced one of our mediators, not even knowing that he had a background in choir singing. They ended up ex exchanging, they, they ended up communicating with, with one another through song. And that allowed this woman to be sufficiently grounded that we could then um, do the work she needed and work with the property management to prevent her eviction. But it was such a beautiful God moment in our program because I didn't know Simon was a singer. This kind of thing has happened over and over again and it happens in part because we're open to the unexpected. We're open to intervention that we haven't even imagined. And when we see it, bringing it to bear to solve the problem. Okay, yeah. I think the, 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 the message that I keep getting each time that when we interact with the CIS team is that, uh, is, I mean, they're very, what you call like life skills. I want to call like, skills. Uh, like life skills elements, trust, uh, trust, trust, trust. And that's what I think I'm taking away um, from today. In as much as today we were talking about landlord and tenancy, I keep hearing that um, as, as, as a resounding message um, uh, for us as mediators. So I invite once again, uh, uh, mediator Washika, Honorable Washika Washira, and also we will invite for her um, now to wrap up from what she's heard and it's actually the key question is so 
for Kenya, how would we be able to move with, with, with this? Uh, you having an, uh, an understanding of the, uh, let me say the structures that are there, and even not with the structures that are there, some of them need to be dismantled because people just need homes eh? and to be at peace with each other. So yeah, probably what are some of the things we may need to dismantle uh, or just move uh, to, to move this, um, to move this. And then after that, we will receive the vote of thanks from mediator Diana and uh, Colin will give us uh, the uh, closing uh, presentation. Honorable Thank Shika. You. Thank you, everybody. I take this opportunity to summarize the takeaways that I've received from this forum. And uh, from what our guest speaker has told us, we need to embrace uh, restorative justice. As much as people want to do mediation, as much, as much as people, others want to go to tribunal, others want to go to court, wherever you want to go, if you are a landlord and if you are a tenant, housing is a basic need of any human being. Anybody can suffer homelessness. Nobody knows what is a, what can come out after a political uh, a political rally or a political process of people voting or what have you. You can find yourself running away, and you can end up being homeless. So what you're saying is that in case we have these things of uh, homelessness, let us embrace mediation. Mediation is where we have win-win situation. We are having uh, mediators almost everywhere, and from what I've learned from CIS is that we should have good listening skills. Let us learn to listen to each other. Landlord, let us listen to tenants. Tenants, let us listen to landlords. Let us talk, 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 and listen, and listen, and listen, so that we lessen this conflict that may lead us to homelessness. Uh, I've also learned that uh, we need to uh, employ therapists, therapists and counselors, social workers. We bring them along during mediation because people who have gone through homelessness have got uh, other issues affecting them that maybe mediators might come in from the point of conflict management. But these people might need other help, like uh, from a, a social perspective. From a, So we need teamwork. What I got from a CIS today is uh, we need an incredible team. So Wangari, let us work as a team. Let us incorporate mediators. And if we are going to move into the CIS, style where we should be actually as mediators let us have therapists on board let us have uh, attorneys on board and let us uh, let us embrace listening skills to each other we are on this second phase of corona in kenya and uh, most people are still affected in terms of finances and it is affecting people in terms of how they can have especially those who are renting houses some people are having it rough when it comes to payment of, uh, of rent. Every month, every month, they're having it rough. Uh, landlords out there, we are praying, actually, let's listen to these tenants. If, if possible, let us even give them a 10% cut, 15% cut, let us move away from homelessness. Let us be there for one another. If it can't work, let us embrace mediation. Wangari, I thank Wasiliana Hub for whatever we have done. All the presenters today, I thank you. But uh, what I'll say is that uh, we need teamwork for us to move forward. Thank you so much. Asante Sana, thank you very much, uh, Washika, for, for, your, for your remarks. Kindly allow me to uh, now invite uh, before we, uh, we, we, we can now move to uh, Colin, uh, let me invite uh, Mediator Diana Oyugi for uh, um, her remarks. Mediator Diana Oyugi is our head of uh, women in mediation leadership. Am I still seeing you here? Diana Oyugi? Okay, I see Diana, but she's not yet um, unmuted. So at this juncture, uh, we kindly invite Colin. Colin, you may kindly give us the closing performance. And then after Colin has given us the closing performance, uh, we will invite uh, Reverend Gishure for his message and blessings, and then we can have the national anthem. Colin, kindly. All right, thank you so much for that. And as I do the last song, this is a song that speaks to me a lot concerning me not rushing on ahead, but I'm focusing on the inner strength I have and the strength that uh, God has put in me. And thank you, enjoy. Lord, I don't wanna rush on ahead in my own strength. In 
you're right here. Lord, I don't want to rush on ahead in my own strength. And you're right here. I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice. I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to know that you are speaking. Lord, I want to love like you. I want to feel what you feel. I want to see what you see. Lord, I, I want to love like you do. I want to feel what you feel. I want to see what you see. I'm not in a hurry when it comes to your spirit, when it comes to your presence, when it comes to your voice. I'm learning to listen, just to rest in your nearness. I'm starting to notice you are speaking. Thank you. Okay. Asante Sana, thank you very much, uh, Colin, for yeah, your closing one for us. And you're saying that, yeah, we are resting on something uh, stronger than ourselves. And yeah, we are really, really grateful for that. Uh, Tonya, kindly, before I, I, I hand over to uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure for his uh, uh, closing remarks and also blessings for the day. Uh, then uh, the anthem, would you have something to say or your team as we are now in closing? Um, well, we're not going to sing. Absolutely not going to follow Colin on that one. Um, <laughs> I, hope, I hope this means we've won it. We've won. You know, last time you won us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we have another video if you want to see a video, but um, no, we don't have, we, we, we can't follow that up. We just appreciate so much being here. Thank you for the melodious songs and um, we enjoyed it. Thanks for having us. Okay. Uh, Ishmael? Ishmael? I just wanna thank you. Just wanna express our gratitude. Thank you for the opportunity um, to be with all of you. Definitely your work is inspiring and it just moves us forward. Just keep up the great work. Thank you for what you do. Thank you. Yes, all I can add is my deep gratitude. This experience, this, this is the third time we've been with you this week. It's been the most profound experience of my year connecting with you all. And what I'm gonna to send to Wangari in the next few days is a suggestion that we start a monthly forum at six or 7 a.m. Pacific time, which would be earlier in the day for you. And it would be an opportunity to share ideas and possibly work together. So uh, I will propose, I will send you something on that uh, in the days ahead. Thank you. Much love to all of you and many, many blessings. Oh, okay. God. Thank you, Diana. I can see you're here. Yeah. I think you're the only one who can. It disappeared totally, totally. Welcome I'm back sorry. now. Welcome. Yes, may I say something? May I continue? Yes. Yeah. Yes, please. I'm yeah. very sorry, every one of you. Good evening and good uh, day and good afternoon for our dear Canadians and the others. Thank you. I'm, I apologize. It went off. Yes, I want to say thank you so much. So much, our dear mediator Wangari. Amazing, amazing. And your amazing team that put this AIM week together. We are truly grateful. And as Caleb said, it sure is epic. That is the best word to really describe this out of this world. And then for the CIS, I want to thank you so much. It is so, so clear that you, you are a great team and so clear that working together and knowing each other strength and being open and, share, and sharing is key. And mm. also that making it clear that there is power when we, mm. when we connect to each other. It was so clear. Thank you for that. And we thank you so much, Honorable Washika, on the real matters on housing, which is a worldwide issue. And it's something that I love when our dear Nonopa Vanda made it so clear and talked about it. 
And I'm happy because she, Nonopa talked about something that we all as mediators out here would love to, the, the view that we need to maintain, maintain a connection with, with CIS, this amazing team, amazing CIS team for sure. So thank you Nonopa for that. You spoke for all of us. And we also thank Reverend Peter Yeshure for sure we need conflict transformation, which is a truly noble and desirable thing that we need to do and get all necessary education towards this. So we thank you so much, so much for that, Washika. And our dear um, singer, amazing singer with amazing songs. Huh? Thank you so much because th they were timely songs, Collins, and thank you so much. It, it actually resonated with, it reminded us us who knows those songs, many us a lot, and you touched our hearts. And I know you touched the hearts of those who don't know because it, the tune and your voice is, uh, is great, really, thank you. We need that during this time, timely COVID and all this, you know, Christmas also, actually, season. So thank you so much. Once more, thank you so much, our dear Wangari and the amazing team. Thank you so much. God bless you all. We love you. Thank you so much. Thank okay. you. Uh, thank you, Mediator Diana, for your remarks. And uh, I, 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 yes, we are also very grateful because uh, it means that uh, we have all been able to share in time together, which has allowed us to uh, mm -hmm. be able to connect and share ideas. There. And when we share ideas, that's how we are able to grow as, um, as individuals. Uh, we thank uh, Roger and team. Uh, they have been with us for three, I mean, three, three, three nights in uh, this particular uh, week, and um, each of the nights has been of so much value. So we, okay. once again, Roger, Tonya, and uh, Ishmael, please yes. receive our appreciation, pass yes. our best regards to uh, your peers and colleagues at the CIS yes. team. Yes. Uh, we acknowledge and commend mm. the, the, I mean, just kicking off this work, and most of all, being open enough and extremely open to share yourselves with us. Um, that um, will definitely stands for purpose, not only a mission that you're on. And we are grateful that you give us an invitation to be part of this mission because I, I think I've just put in the chat, um, homelessness is scary. And I think it's even Roger who said that. And on the other side, um, someone who is a little landlord or who even owns an asset, they still have an end a right or uh, even then they are scared they will they could get auctioned at any point in time because it could probably be on mortgage or even if it's just not. Um, it, it, it is about the relationships and how they can be enhanced. So really grateful that you've given us this golden opportunity um, to be part of this um, conversation. So thank you, Tonya. Uh, thank you, Ishmael. Uh, thank you once again, Roger. And also uh, we thank you, Alan, for joining uh, this conversation today. And Jennifer, it's a delight to um, have you with us um, today. So colleagues, as you get into closing, I would wish now to kindly um, invite um, uh, Reverend Professor Peter Gishure. Uh, Father, are we going to have the national anthem first or we'll receive your, your, your message and blessings? So we have the, your message and blessing and then the national anthem. Okay, so Colin, Colin will follow with the national anthem. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, uh, Professor Peter Gishure, kindly. Thank you, so, Father. So thank you very much, everybody. And uh, I think Wangare, we want to thank you for bringing us into this forum. And what we have learned is best practice. And I think that word should be there. And we want to learn more about the best practice. CIS has shown us what they are doing. Uh, I would also like to challenge ourselves that as Yashika said, we form a consortium as a referral in Kenya and probably in other parts of Africa we tend to take every case, even when we are not well grounded. As, uh, we probably are not very good at marriage, but if we are good at consortium, we will know how to refer some of the conflict. If it's okay, the tribunal, housing tribunal, we may be able to, we may not be able to be very good at it or conveyance uh, about land, etc. So what we have learned today is very important. And I think as, uh, uh, Kenyans, as Africans, we want to learn what has happened happen in the other parts of the world, but let us now help our people. Our people are in pain. And the, I, don't, I don't think I need to believe that. They, they cannot resolve 
small disputes. They cannot even resolve big disputes. They are being dispossessed. They are being hurt, and uh, they are living in poverty because we are not there to help them. So let's put our acts together. Let's bring everybody on board and let us make this big. Thank you very much. So my prayer is very simple. We, is a, is a, we just say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the, fellowship Holy, of Spirit the Holy Spirit be with us Spirit. all. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Reverend Father. And uh, at this juncture, we kindly invite Colin. Colin? So, uh, dear colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we once again wish to appreciate the time we have been able to spend together. The African International Mediation Week and uh, Strategy 20 Conference officially ends tomorrow. Tomorrow, you have the invitation to uh, use it as a day for prayers for peace. Uh, please make use of it uh, in uh, all the, any place you, you may be going to worship or even in your own uh, personal uh, time. Please uh, remember to pray for peace, which is our continuation and our closing event for the African International Mediation Week and Strategy Conference. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, Asante Sana, Kwaherini, goodbye, have a good night. It was a delight to have you and thank you for allowing us to spend time with you. Asante Sana, God bless. Asante, good night. God bless you. Asante, Sana. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, Diana. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Ishmael, Ishmael, when you're ready, we will be ready to, yeah, to say good night. And Colin, uh, Colin Moy, we are looking forward to the next time when we will be with you also. Thank you. Asante. Thank you. Bye-bye. Wangari, bye bye. Asante sana. This this is who? Is this Sarotich? <laughs> oh, Kenya, Kenya. Oh, Kenya, Kenya. Oh, the 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 double. Oh. <laughs> we are so happy to yeah to hear you. Thank sana. you. Thank you. Sorry, I was not available over the week. The week yeah, we are we are happy to have to have had you today and yes, yeah, have a good evening. Thank you. Yeah, have a good evening. Yeah, good. Okay. <laughs> and so this is the after party segment. So we take the opportunity to invite um, our live performance artists for today, Trailblazer Colin Kennedy Moy, who's an R&B artist for his uh, closing performance to the after party team. Thank you very much and welcome Colin Kennedy Moy. All right, thank you so much. As I do the last song, um, I know that you mediators are doing a lot for us, are doing a lot for us out there. And uh, your strength should be in the Lord and you should be light in the Lord since you're doing something that he wants, which is bringing peace. And uh, thank you so much. So uh, be blessed by this. 
And there's a table that you've prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, and I believe you've overcome and I will lift my song of praise for what you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, this is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how, yeah, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Sing along. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. Thank you. Be blessed. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think uh, from the message by Colin, uh, so uh, Colin, I think the message that you've given us today uh, will help us to uh, close this particular session that mediators, our role is to help people to fight their battles. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's a privilege when we are handed over that particular um, re uh, responsibility. Um, in, uh, in this vocation of mediation. And so we take it in stride knowing that, uh, yes, we are supporting our own selves and our own people and even ourselves in fighting the battles. So I wish you a good the rest of the evening and uh, we look forward to uh, further engagement in other in adventures and initiatives. And please remember tomorrow is a peace prayer day as you keep the nation, keep our leaders, keep the entire world in your prayers for peace. So God bless you and have a good evening. Goodbye.